Welcome back to a new devlog. In this episode we'll be taking a look at a list of issues and see how we can resolve them. First up we'll tackle two at the same time, missing scenery objects and washed out colours. Here we'll see an overview of Imperial Grand Prix. Now it may not be quite so noticeable at first, but this map is lacking a large amount of detail in the form of static objects. So if I just go ahead and toggle them on you'll see everything that just pops into view. We were missing trees, buildings, boxes, overhanging nets and even an entire pirate ship from the water. It was an easy enough fix to import the models, position them and add their respective textures. A subsequent issue arises from the way that these imported meshes are being culled. That is to say only one face of the mesh is being rendered and it was being rendered without any opacity at all. So things like nets or this fence for example were not able to be seen through and the trees appear as a blocky mess. So my solution to this problem was to write a custom shader to disable culling. Therefore the camera renders both the front and back sides of meshes. But I also added the ability to brighten up the colours which fixed the issue of the washed out look. And I think you'll agree the before and afters of these new materials look incredible and I could easily apply this shader to the other maps too, allowing for beautiful results. Now those first two issues are out of the way, what else are we missing? Power up bricks. Now I could go in and add these one by one and position them by hand, which I did begin to do before deciding to look for another method, which fortunately I found. If we open up the track viewer and load our test track, we can navigate to the power ups tab on the right hand side, and you'll see it displays the color of the power up bricks and their location. So I was able to throw together a quick script that would be able to read these values from a text document and instantiate the bricks in the correct position relative to each other. Here is the script. It's very primitive. It simply points towards the text document I've pasted the data into. And for each line it reads, it will split the line at every comma. Then, based on the word found in the first split of the line, it will instantiate that respected brick from an array at the coordinates found on the same line of text. Once the bricks are spawned in, it's simply a case of scaling and positioning them. Now the bricks are in place, it's a case of actually implementing the power-ups. And now is the time you'll be able to peek behind the curtain at what real game dev looks like. It's a game of whack -a bug but I thought I'd showcase some of the funnier multiplayer related power-up issues I ran into, like gaining super height from traps, or the homing cannonballs that decide to self-home on the player that shot them. Now I had so much fun playing around with these bugs that I almost want to call them features. Next on the agenda was shortcuts. Now the shortcuts in this game vary in terms of accessibility. Some you must open by firing a red weapon, some are simply just another pathway, and some are a bit more intricate, like in the case of Magma Moon Marathon, which is two shortcuts. One, which requires the player to input a colour code in order to open a doorway, as indicated by this computer here. For this player, the code is blue, blue, blue. So on the next lap, he will have to drive through the blue gateways for a doorway to open.
The second shortcut on this track requires a shield power-up. Simply activate the power-up and you'll be able to drive through this wall, platform 9 and 3 quarters style. At least, that's how I remember this shortcut working. I've had to study a lot of old YouTube videos in 240p in order to piece together this relic of gaming history, and it was around this point my brain had had enough. Now as usual, I'll leave some gameplay footage at the end of the video, and I think for the time being, I'll put development for this project on pause. I feel as though I've implemented all of the core aspects of the original, and while I'm not entirely finished with everything, I believe the amount of time I'd be dedicating to coding these final pieces aren't worth my time. This project was mostly to showcase how ripping assets and rebuilding games can be done, rather than trying to code a clone of the original, which is why I didn't focus my time into replicating the vehicle physics, and along the way I was able to learn a new skill in Unity's netcode for game objects paired with the lobby system which I will definitely be using again in future projects. One thing I can confirm is throughout the hours of game testing, I never did tire of hearing this music.